Jill Doherty. She's actually the former CNN Moscow bureau chief and currently a Georgetown University adjunct professor. Good morning, Jill. Great to have you on bright and Good. early. Um, as Russia has been losing ground on the battlefield, we've seen them really start to target uh, civilian infrastructure, uh, power plants. There's a dam that now is uh, potentially under the Kremlin's scope. How long do you anticipate this is going to continue? This could continue for quite a while because really what's happening, you know, if you stand back and look at it, in the beginning of the war, the, the Russians were attacking, you know, fuel depots, things that could be used kind of in a military sense. But now that they are ceding territory to the Ukrainians, the Ukrainians are taking back that territory, the Russians are really uh, trying to figure out what to do because on the ground, their game is not strong. So they've taken to the air. And this is where they can go in and really just bomb civilian infrastructure. And you, you say, you know, why would they do that? Well, number one, it degrades uh, the Ukrainians, but it also sows a lot of fear and makes areas inhabitable. I mean, if you go after water, electric, lights, et cetera, it makes it almost impossible for people to live there. So I think that's a technique that they're using. And Clarissa talking about, you know, removing people from the areas. You could say that that kind of clears the decks for the Russians to try to have an all-out battle without civilians in the way. But I think the problem now is this is obviously the technique that they are continuing. They are not stopping this. And uh, Putin apparently thinks that this is effective. So I fear that this is going to go on for quite a long time. And, and a, a new chapter in this war uh, also deals with the use of these uh, suicide or kamikaze drones uh, that Russia has uh, started using. Uh, the United States believes that it is Iran that is supplying these drones. Uh, Iran denies it. Russia denies it. In, in your assessment, is there any credibility to those denials? Well, <laughs> if you watch Russian TV, uh, there is no credibility because actually on TV, we've had a couple of instances where the anchors or people who are interviewing were, were saying, well, we know they're uh, Iranian, but we can't really say that. So let's keep it you know, kind of quiet. So this is it's ludicrous. I mean, I think what's happening is the Russians from what I understand, have had, have, you know, bought these missile, these drones from the Iranians and then tweaked them in some fashion to make them Russian. So when the Russians say, claim that they are Russian drones, technically they have, again, you know, tweak them, but they are essentially Iranian. And they're not very sophisticated. I mean, they come in, they're kind of like small missiles. They are called kamikaze is they blow up that, you know, there are other drones that can actually be reused. So these are really, I would say, weapons of desperation. Russians do not have adequate supplies of drones on their own. And so they're they're using uh, Iranian drones. And the, the U.S. intelligence is that there are uh, IRGC agents, uh, or Iranians in the ground in Ukraine, training Russians on these so-called Russian drones. I interesting. Uh, you curve of logic there. Um, Jill, France has called for the United Nations to investigate this. Uh, they say it's a, a potential violation of international law. What could the United, United Nations do if they found evidence uh, that uh, Russia was doing this to punish them? Well, one of the problems in the United Nations uh, is that, of course, Russia is on the Security Council. And so any action that they might take uh, Russia usually tries, tries to block, but recently we've seen a lot of nations actually condemning what Russia is doing. But ultimately, whether it could stop uh, Iran or Russia from doing that is kind of questionable. But I think, you know, overall, Russia's image is being damaged by that. You have to look at their friends now. Their friends, uh, in a military sense, are Iran and North Korea. That, in my opinion, is a really sad commentary on Russian diplomacy. Yeah, uh, the friends you keep say a lot about you, don't they? Uh, Jill Doherty, thank you so much for the time. Thanks for the uh, insight.